At one of the annual conferences of mobile communications, the new technology of analysis of acoustic signals was presented. And even though it is a modern discovery, its roots go deeply into the very ancient times. The most intricate aspects of this technology are the ones that developers don't say a word about, but in fact, it allows us to understand the deeper connection between mortality of the body and the immortality of the human consciousness. It also gives a hint of the purpose of some megalithic structures. Alexa, what's the capital city of the United States? The United States capital city is Washington, D.C. The United States capital city is Washington, D.C. The authors called the new technology Backdoor. In a nutshell, it allows to form specific ultrasonic signals that are not audible to people at all, but are well recorded by non-modified conventional microphones and clearly appear in audio recordings. Experiments have shown that the backdoor system has the ability not only to receive but to transmit information through the unmodified gadget's microphones via ultrasonic channel. Fundamentally important point of this trick is that the microphone does not require any modification, and this allows to successfully apply this technology to billions of phones, tablets, and laptops. It is worth giving a retrospective picture, from which it becomes clear how ancient are the roots of the described technology. The very first contact with some spy software that allows to steal personal data from the isolated computer systems communicating between instances of itself across air gaps using ultrasonic communication was described by the Canadian hacker Dragos Ru. He found this very unusual backdoor communicating between computer speakers and microphone, along with some other malware systems in his computer, and published his research online. The problem was that no one thought about such threats before, so no protection existed by that time at all. Not known before for the IT Security Society community, but perhaps very well known for the hackers that work for NSA and CIA though, for those who prefer to keep in secret their tools and methods of work. In fact, the base for this technology has been used by a military since a long time ago. By the time Dragos published his research, there have been no proven occurrences of ultrasonic backdoors, and even his fellow hackers were very skeptical. Many began to openly sneer at Dragos. First reaction people had was, oh, ultrasound, that's impossible. There's no way in the world this can possibly be happening. Even though, you know, we've had papers published from MIT and Cambridge has been researching it from since 2003. It was a lot, almost a little bit of a relief when the remote control that we were seeing, you know, we stopped when, as soon as uh, we removed the microphone speakers from this particular unit. Same year in the International Scientific and Technical Journal of Communications, Two serious and authoritative German researchers from the Fraunhofer Institute published this article. They confirmed that to bypass the standard means of protection of computers and networks, it is quite possible to create special hidden communication channels on the basis of interfaces that were not envisaged in the design of computers. The communication technology in the German device was built on the basis of an existing system that was originally developed for reliable underwater communications used by the Navy. In fact, scientists have simply adapted this military system so they can form in the air hidden and inaudible to people channels using ultrasonic frequency range. The first experiments of the Swedish artist Friedrich Jorgensen with the recording of bird singing on a newly acquired reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder enter the history as the birth and development of the supposedly pseudoscientific research called Instrumental Transcommunications, or ITC, also known as the Electronic Voice Phenomenon. Mainstream science doesn't consider these experiments as true and real, even though researchers of this topic designed and created dozens of electronic devices to communicate with talkative inhabitants of the part of reality that supposedly doesn't exist. The father of electronic voice research was Friedrich Jorgensen, who was born in 1903 in Odessa and spoke fluent Russian and German, 
that later on helped him a lot in transliteration of transcommunication tapes. It was in 1959 when he first discovered strange noises that had some voice muttering that overlapped the bird songs on tape. He describes in detail how he gets to the idea that there were voices from the world beyond in his book Radio Communications with Dead. The fact that this phenomenon exists was experimentally proven since then by many enthusiasts. Mainstream scientists, though, would give this phenomena any explanations from projections of thoughts of researchers till mirroring of radio signals from meteorites on tape, but that these are actual voices of the dead people who obviously for this exact science do not exist any longer. Not only is this phenomenon widely ignored, but also censored from Wikipedia. Amongst millions and millions of articles on Wiki, you won't find any mentions about Hans Otto Koning in regard to electronic voice phenomenon. German engineer and designer Koning is famous for half a century as an extraordinary talented specialist who has created a number of devices for transcommunications with the highest quality of reception and recording of signals, not only in audio but also in video bands. He got his interest in electronic voice phenomenon in his late 40s when he was already an established professional in electronic acoustics. That's why from the beginning he didn't start as an amateur with a tape recorder, but as a professional who adapted electronic equipment that he knew better than everything else, electronics that work in the ultrasonic range. Koning constantly worked on the improvement of his equipment, because as he explained, the best results achieved when one uses very precise resonance bands. Later, Koning developed a brand new electronic complex based on quartz crystals with irradiation by ultraviolet. He called his system HRS, or Hyperspace System. But in fact, the basic elements of this kind of telephone to the other world, but without any electronics, can be found in many structures constructed on a massive scale over the world many thousands of years ago. Here is an interesting subject in which it is not clear where to start a research. There are a lot of megalithic structures in Europe, but they have absolutely none traces of high technology in stone processing, except their weights, dozens stone, hundreds stone. How to understand this? How to try to explain this? I don't know. For example, this field in Karnak, where there are thousands of pillars, some are taller than a man. What are they doing? here? Why was it erected? In local legends it was mentioned that these Menhirs, semi-gods, were erected. We talk about gods and their technically advanced civilization, but Egyptian historian Manetho mentioned a period in between the rule of gods and humans. It was a time when the semi-gods ruled. If it were for thousands of years, then it might explain the volume of these strange structures. At least, regarding this subject, none of the researchers made any progress, but something should be done there. According to the Old Testament, there were sacred objects on the Canaanite heights near the altar. On most of the heights of the Canaanites, there were sacred pillars which prophetic writings called to crush, both in Palestine itself and in the Transjordan region. There are many reasonable arguments in favor of the fact that they had something to do with the veneration of ancestors. These pillars occupied the central part of the sanctuary, in which a statue of a deity could have stood. Another example can be found on the small Pacific island of Malekula. Several decades ago, local residents built some dolmens similar to those that were erected all over the world thousands of years ago. There were shrines for all the inhabitants of the island. It was believed that the leader of a secret religious society that existed on the island came to Dolmen to talk with the spirit of a great ancestor and ask him for advice. None of the historians can clearly explain why our ancestors were keen to build with megaliths on such scale and from megaton stone blocks even way before the first civilizations appeared. On the other hand, so-called pseudo-scientists that are involved in the development of technical devices for communication with other sides of the world have pretty clear and technically grounded explanations. 
According to the researchers of ancient megalithic structures known as menhirs and dolmens, each of them have at least one multi-ton block that has a high amount of quartz crystals in it. Quartz is a mineral with a strong piezoelectric effect, or in other words, it's got properties of conveying one type of energy vibrations into vibrating signals of another kind. The main configurations of megalithic complexes such as pillars or menhirs and detached houses dolmens, could be interpreted as phased array antenna type or Hemholtz resonators. Acoustic physicists know that any void, for example an empty bottle, has a well-defined natural vibration frequency, or a certain tone, which depends on the size and geometric parameters of the void. By supplying external energy to such a resonator, it is possible to cause it to sound at this frequency. The natural frequency of any acoustic void can be calculated mathematically. For such calculations, researchers took the parameters of eight Caucasian dolmens described in 1978 by the archaeologist Markovin. It turned out that for all dolmens, their own resonance wavelengths are within the audible range of the human ear. So, the first theoretical estimate showed that the parameters of dolmens are such that if they generated sounds at their own frequency, a person could hear these sounds. How could such generators work? Researchers believe that by converting solar energy into sound. According to Markovin's data, the overwhelming majority of Caucasian dolmens are oriented with a hole to the southern, sunny side. To increase the piezoelectric effect that generates ultrasound under the influence of the UV of sun's rays, multi-ton blocks are either superimposed on each other, as in dolmens and cromlechs, or installed vertically at the narrower end. That doesn't make sense from the stability point of view, but makes perfect sense for the physics of communications. In short, from a technical point of view, some megalithic structures are devices for receiving and demodulating waves into sounds audible to the human ear. In other words, these megalithic structures are essentially something like a landline phone that people in different parts of the planet massively used to communicate with the other world of their ancestors and spirits. At first, this idea might look like a long shot, but there is plenty of indirect evidence for it that are both available in the studies of anthropologists of primitive cultures and in the experiments of serious scientists who are studying the megaliths and manage to get one step closer to solving a mystery. Some of these megaliths undoubtedly played the role of acoustic generators, converting solar energy into audible sounds and were serving as a back door to the other side. Thank you.